A for loop is to repeat a command or series of commands for a set number of times or a fixed number of times. Let's make a script and I'll show you the basic syntax. So your basic syntax is you start with for, okay, and then you have a variable of some description, so I'm just going to write variable here, okay, and then it, that equals the first, um, the first value, um, and then the increment, okay, and then the last value, okay, and then you then you write your commands in here, go here, okay, um, oops, commands. And then you finish it with an end, like the functions and the various other things we've been doing. Okay, so that's how that's how you you write it. So this first line contains the mandatory for command. Okay, and then your um your variable is and this is basically the loop loop counter. Okay, and this loop counter works in a similar manner to defining a vector. So you've got your first value, the increment, and then the last value. Okay. Um, the increment it takes the increment and can be neglected if that increment is one, and then the last is the ending value. So, for example, you could, we could type, for example, um, our variable. Let's call it k. Um, goes from uh, zero in steps of five to fifteen. Okay, that's a good, that was an example. Does so that mean as you run your commands, oh, let's go from yeah from 0 to 5 to 15, okay. In this case, for the first iteration, k in your commands will be 0. In the second iteration, it will be 5. In the third iteration, it will be 10. And in the fourth iteration, it will be 15. So that value, that, um, that k value will increase in steps of 5 as it runs through. And when k gets to 15, that loop ends and then the, um, the program will continue on after that loop. There's another example, if we wanted to run a loop 50 times, we could start off this with a um, 1, okay, and it, we know that if there's no colon in the middle, then we get um, integers, and then we go make the last one 50 times. And so in this case, k and the commands will be 1, and then it'll loop around again, it'll be 2, k equals 3, k equals 4, and so on and so forth, until you get to k equals 50, at which point this loop will finish, and the commands following the loop will, will then be run. Now this sort of setup, where you've got integer values, is quite useful for filling up a, a vector um, with a, a series of values based upon the commands. Now this line 2 contains the commands, or series of commands, here that, um, that, uh, that you want to be acting upon, those commands that you want to run during each iteration of the loop. And then, as with all you know, the various other things we've been looking at, if else statements and functions, you need to end this, uh, this sort of uh, setup um, and that's the end command there. So let's go for a very, very simple command, okay? And we're going to say, let's call this x. Uh, it's going to be a number from 1 to 9, but in increments of 1. That's just for completeness, put the increment in there. And all we're going to do in this command is we're just going to display x, okay? So this is a very simple thing. So if I click run, it'll ask me to save. And we're just going to call this simple uh, for loop. Okay, so let's put that in here. Chapter five. Okay, so there it is. And if you see in the command window, we started the loop run of simple for loop. X equals one. So it did that. Ended the thing. Next loop round. X was equal to two. Then three. Then four. Then five. Then six. And seven. And eight, the nine. So you can see that we've got the loop running, um, and it counted up from one to nine. So that's a very straightforward thing. Now I've got in here. We've also got a simple um, uh, uh, for example. Um, this is straight, relatively straightforward. Let's go over. It's got, I've called it call complex for example, but it's not that complex. It's basically a script to create a quadratic equation. Now. We did this before, and it's a, we don't, don't, wouldn't actually necessarily need to use a loop, but this is useful to 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 show what's going on. Okay, so complex for example script plot a quadratic equation. Okay, created some time ago by me. First thing it does, it clears all the variables, closes um clears the command window, and then closes all any previous figure windows. Okay, so the um 
first off, this is, so this is a script that contains a for loop. So the first thing we've done is defined a range for x. Okay, you can see x goes from minus 10 to 10 um, with an uh, uh, increment of 0 0.01. Uh, okay, so we've got a variable that's going to be created called x. And then we've got 4k equals 1 to the length of x. Okay, so on the length of x, as we remember back in chapter 2, the length would actually give us the number of elements in that vector in a sense. So it'll start at 1 and it'll go up, increment it up to 1, up to the length of that variable x. Okay, then we've got this, this line here, y, k, so this is obviously going to create a new variable called y, and the first element in the first loop, obviously k will be, be 1, so the first element of y will be the first element of x squared. It'll then repeat the command for when k is 2, so the second value of k will be the second value of x squared, and so on and so forth until you get to the length of x, which will be um, you know, the last value of, of the x um, variable up here. We're then going to plot x versus y, because there'll be two vectors now that are the same length. Okay, and then we add the labels to the graph. So I'm going to run this command. And it will go through the process, and then we'll display um, the graph of y equals x squared. If we just go through this a little bit, 1 through 13 is a sort of standard header in a sense, um, including the description, who wrote it, last update, and a variable dictionary. Here we define our independent variable, okay, which is our range for x, okay, going from minus 10 to positive 10 in increments of 0 0.01. And then here is our for loop. So we start it with 4, we set our variable k to go from 1 to the length of x. Okay, so you could have picked any anything for here, this could be n or t or whatever, or even counter. And we want the, the commands within this to be repeated the number of times in this vector, in this in this uh, variable. Now you can see that this um, variable, when it's created, will actually have the 2001 um, uh, elements in it. So k will go from 1 to 2001. And so obviously this vector and uh, will, will be also end up being 2001 um, elements long. But it's best to use length x because obviously if we if we change this, we could change this to point zero one, and it would obviously then do it for um, twenty thousand and one loops instead of just two thousand and one, and so on. And you just basically this, all this automatically alters as necessary. This is the command we want to iterate. Okay, so here we're saying y, um, the, you know, every element of y will be the same element of x squared. Okay, that's quite straightforward to sort of understand and then this ends the loop and then this is a simple plot command plotting x versus y x is here y has been defined in the loop and then we add the labels y and x so if we click run again okay but then obviously it's created that that thing and like i said if we look at the uh, variable um, workspace you can see that um, x is 2001 long okay k started at one and as the program ran, it ran all the way up to 2001. So the final value of k coming out is 2001. And you can see that y is also the same um, 2001 long vector. Okay. And like I said, if you change this to 0 0.001, so we're going to have a larger number of values, k will iterate from 1 to the length of this value, this vector. So if I click now, run, You see that k is um, the, the now our vectors x and y are now two th twenty thousand and one values long, and k has iterated up to that point, and so we get a obviously another curve which is the same as before. Okay.